In this video, I'm going to teach you how to practice for your orals examination the way an Olympic athlete trains for the big event. And we're starting right now. Hi, I'm Tom Mullaney, and this is First Gen Professor, where we discuss how academia really works. So if you're in grad school or if you're navigating an academic career, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to be talking about practicing for your orals exam, this major milestone in your graduate career. Most people use practice techniques that are really inefficient. First of all, they rely heavily upon a friend or a colleague or an unwitting partner to be asking questions. Each of the answers in the process of training takes way too long and you can't really cover that much ground. And because there are so many possible questions that you could be asked in the exam, this method never allows you to cover all the bases prior to the big day. Well, I'm gonna teach you a much more efficient way that you can use with a partner or by yourself. Let's get started. There are basically six parts of this process. The first part is the easy part. Ask yourself a question or ask a friend or a colleague or a partner to ask a question of you. If you need some inspiration for the kinds of questions that you might receive, I've included a few in the description below. Okay, that's the easy part. Now come the harder parts. Step two, this is the missing piece in most people's training regimen and indeed in their actual orals exam performance. Step two is that you want to ask yourself, what kind of question have I just been asked? If you want an overview of the archetypal questions that most people ask in an orals examination, I am linking a video about this right now, and I recommend that you take a look at it later. I will also include a link for this video in the description below. But in a nutshell, there are four archetypal questions that show up over and over and over again, and each of these archetypal questions poses specific challenges and opportunities for you as the examinee. Each of these four archetypal questions need to be answered in their own particular way. And if you start trying to answer archetypal question one as if it were archetypal question three, you're gonna get lost really fast. So the first thing you need to ask yourself in the quiet of your own mind is what archetypal question, have I been asked? And therefore I know what my strategy is going to be. Step three is to decide on the fly, what is the architecture of my answer going to be? Here is a quick tip, make it a three-part structure. I know that that is a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. I mean, dear God, that cliche has been around for millennia. The reason is quite simple. A two-part structure gives rise to binaries, dichotomies, and oversimplifications. There is hardly ever a two-part answer in an orals exam that ever leaves the examiner feeling satisfied. It almost always leads down unproductive roads. But a four-part structure is too long. Remember, you are shooting for an answer that ranges between six and seven minutes, ideally. If you start trying to give four-part answers, you're either gonna be rushing through each of those sections too fast to say anything of substance, or all of your answers are going to start bleeding out into the eight and nine minute range, and you're really going to be putting yourself at a disadvantage. Remember, every individual exam in the overall orals exam lasts about 20 minutes. That's not a long period of time. So if you're giving eight, nine minute answers, you're gonna run out of time and you're not gonna be able to really show the breadth of your understanding. So this brings us back to the magic number three. Three allows you to avoid dichotomies and binaries and oversimplifications, but three also allows you to give a substantive answer in a short period of time. So the rule of thumb is, unless you have a goddamn good reason to give a four-part answer or a two-part answer, just make it simple and make it a three-part answer. The next step is you've got to name those parts. You need to name them thematically, and you also need to decide what is the time period of the section. Many answers in orals exams require chronological answers. So if you're gonna give a three-part answer, you need to know the start and end date of each of your sections. Are you gonna be talking about the historiography on a particular subject in the 50s and 60s, the 70s and 80s, and the 90s and aughts, or are you gonna use a different kind of architecture? You need to decide that before your mouth opens. The other thing you need to do is name those periods. From the perspective of an examiner, it feels a little bit undercooked if the student simply says, 
I have a three-part structure, this time period, this time period, this time period, but doesn't give any kind of thematic name to any of the periods. It's far more convincing when the student takes the time to characterize, to give a name that captures the quality of each of those three sections. So if I'm talking about approaches by historians in the 1950s and 60s to a particular topic, I might refer to that as Cold War era historiography on a subject. I could choose a different name, but the key is I've given each piece of my answer a name, a short memorable name, and a start and end date. So next, you need to come up with at least one exemplary author or work for each of your three parts. One is the minimum, but you could try for two or three. I wouldn't go much further than that because that runs the risk of your answer getting really long. If you're trying to cram four or five or six authors into each one of your three parts, it's really hard to walk through so many arguments in such a short period of time. Also, it's a little bit of overkill. You want to remember that quality trumps quantity in this case. If your examiner hears you address the two or three core authors, in a particular time period, they are going to assume that you do know the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th if they ask you. You don't need to waste your time during the exam actually saying those authors' names. But of course, if you don't say any authors, or if you list a really random assortment of authors, then your examiner is going to start to worry, does this person really know what this time period in the literature was about. Finally, during this process, you want to be jotting all of this down on a blank piece of paper as you think. Now here is the secret sauce of this training regimen. Every step that I have just listed is taking place in your mind over the course of about 10 to 20 seconds. That's right, it's happening super fast, silently. The key is, in this particular way of practicing, you're not actually practicing an entire 20 minute exam. Because again, that takes too long and it's asking way too much of your friend or your colleague or your partner to sit with you for hours and hours and hours. Instead, what you're practicing here are the first 20 seconds of every answer that you will give. So what you want to do is have a blank piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, and you want to ask yourself a question, go through this 10 to 20 second process that I've just outlined, jot really scribbled notes down while you're thinking through, and then give your table of contents answer. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am linking a video which explains what the very first words out of your mouth need to be for every answer during the orals exam. So please do watch that video after this one. I'll also link it in the description below. So you ask yourself a question or your partner asks you a question. You work through this process that I have just talked about. You're taking furious kind of scribbly notes, just almost as mnemonic memory devices. You're not writing an essay. And then you are uttering what the table of contents of your answer is going to be. And then you repeat. Ask a question, work through this 10 to 20 second process, taking notes along the way, give your table of contents of the answer you are going to give, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. You've probably done the math already, but using this method, you can iterate through dozens and dozens of questions in a relatively short period of time. And you can improve your performance. Because if you get to the end of these 10 to 20 seconds and you jot down all these notes, and then you give a table of contents answer, you announce what the structure of your argument's gonna be, you give the name of one exemplary author per part, well, then you can sit back or you can ask your colleague who's practicing with you, what did you think? And there are a variety of ways that you could do this well or badly. For one thing, your time periods might be completely off. The, the start and end date for each of your sections might need improvement. Or what you have called each of these three sections might be suboptimal. The author that you cited for each of these three sections might be the wrong choice. You might actually get to the end of that iteration of the drill and think, oh my god, the better choice would have been. Well, the great thing about this way of training is that you don't need to wait 20 minutes to be able to start again and make that improvement. You can do it immediately, over and over again. And here's the other key thing, and this you need to take a little bit as an article of faith. An orals exam answer is won or lost 
in the opening 30 seconds. If you get really good at working through this 10 to 20 second silent process, and if you get really good at uttering a table of contents that gives you a good architecture, a good kind of naming system, and a good initial set of authors, basically from that point on, it's autopilot. Because you read these works, you know these works, that's not the issue. You, you did your homework. The real thing that an orals exam is testing is not knowledge, is not did you read these works, it is the performance of knowledge under pressure. That's really what the orals exam is about. And so if you can recreate or simulate this pressure, go through that initial 10 to 20 seconds in silence and then utter the table of contents of your answer. And if that table of contents is spot on, well, then the rest of those five to six minutes of your answer are going to go well. But on the other hand, if your table of contents is off, then there's almost nothing you can do for the rest of those five minutes that's going to improve the structure. So go give it a try. Sit down with yourself, pose yourself a question, and go through the operations that I just walked you through. I guarantee that if you go through this process 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, remember, I'm only talking about a 30-second iteration, you are going to get so much better at developing well-structured answers extemporaneously, and as importantly, your confidence levels are going to increase. Well, that's it for us today. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please give the video a like and consider subscribing. Also, I have many other videos on the orals exam process, which I will link in the description below and in the end card. So make sure you go watch those videos right now. I'll see you in the next episode.